Ready or Not is a deliciously chaotic movie. It's got guns, it's got guts, it's got glory, and it's also got... God? You see, lying at the heart of this 2019 film is the theme of diabolism versus matrimony. Diabolism, of course, being a worship and reverence of the devil. The antithesis of this can be found in matrimony, which in a Christian context is seen as an act of God, a holy bond, a special connection. And like I said, this theme permeates throughout Ready or Not. From the very first frame we are exposed to the presence of the devil, even if we are unaware of it. If you remember this line from 2 Corinthians that I showed at the start of the video, you will notice the word Belial. This is the only mention of this word in the New Testament. Belial is the Hebrew word meaning wickedness, but it has also taken on another meaning, the devil. In Ready or Not, the Leidomas fortune is said to have been acquired after Victor de Lomas made a deal with a man called Lebeil, which is an anagram for, you guessed it, Belial. So off the bat, the theme of diabolism makes itself clear in the movie, through the mysterious character of Lebeil. Near the end of the film, the diabolical nature of the Leidomas family is solidified further. They literally start chanting, Hail Satan. And it is in this satanic setting that our other theme is explored, marriage, matrimony. Alongside our protagonist's journey to escape, we are also invited to witness the collapse of a marriage, how these two newlyweds, Grace and Alex, begin to grow more distant, both in terms of physical distance but also psychologically. Grace as a character hardens, becomes more cynical after the trauma she endures, this is perhaps best captured in her brief encounter with Lebeil, Belial, as we just established, the literal devil. In contrast, Alex has to grapple with the tension between him and his family, how this tension and also their diabolism forms cracks in his relationship with his wife. These cracks are eventually forged into gaping chasms. Alex embraces the demonic way, betraying Grace and being willing to sacrifice her. Ultimately, we find our holy matrimony, this act of God being corrupted by the forces of the devil. When we first see Grace, she is reciting her vows, through sickness and health, till death do us part. Well, this ironically becomes literally true as Alex explodes in a gloriously gruesome fashion. Adding to the Christian symbolism is the fact that our protagonist herself is called Grace. To cycle back to what I said earlier, what we see play out in the film, in all its bloody extravagance, is the theme of diabolism versus matrimony. Or, to put it perhaps more appropriately, diabolism corrupting matrimony. So, let's take a look at a few ways in which Ready or Not is able to fully emphasize and explore what we just talked about. When making a movie that is entirely set over the course of one night, costume becomes very important. You need to ensure that they stay consistent without breaking continuity, and also that they evolve alongside the characters that wear them. The costume tells us about the character, their lifestyle and emotions and the situations that they're caught up in. If we look at the costumes of Grace and Alex in particular, we can gain insight into how effectively the costume has been used in this film. Grace starts out in a traditional wedding dress, long flowing gown, angelic white colour. It reflects her innocence, and also the purity and holiness associated with marriage. This fashionista article also notes that the high neck, long sleeve silhouette speaks to Grace's vulnerability, entering the Leidomas domain, and serves as an armour of sorts. Over the course of the movie, Grace's dress, this symbol of traditional marriage, begins to break down. She rips the gown slightly, then swaps out the white heels for some converses. She then fully tears off the bottom of the gown, gets a gun and ammo strap. The point where she falls into the pit of dead bodies is where the dress becomes blacker, being fouled with dirt and grime. Her hair gets messier, she rips off the sleeves, that previously mentioned armour of sorts, and also begins to stain the dress with blood. She rips the dress even more. And then we get to the climax of the movie, where the dress becomes completely drenched in blood. In the final shot, the dress takes on this deep red-black colour, 
the initial white evolves into a satanic red. The dress embodies the psychological journey that Grace undergoes, and it represents her break away from traditional matrimony. I think costume designer Avery Plews puts it best when she says, Marriage is such a traditional patriarchal institution, and she, Grace, just completely disassembles that and reappropriates that symbol as a tool for her. Alex's costume is in contrast quite different from Grace's. He also begins in white, but unlike Grace, continues to stay in that single colour for most of the movie. This reflects his commitment to his marriage, his willingness to protect Grace and go against his family. It is only when he witnesses his brother and mother's death and proceeds to give in to his diabolical side that his clothes drastically change, becoming stained with blood. He gives in to the temptations of the devil and as a result destroys his own marriage. The movie uses natural lighting to its advantage, having the bulk of the story set at night, contrasting the bright daylight that the wedding was set in. The scenes at night have a sickly green hue to them. This becomes even more noticeable when Grace goes outside. It is here that the movie gets really creative with its use of artificial lighting. Candles, lanterns, torches, fireplaces, they all illuminate shots with yellow glows that adds to the unsettling nature of the Le Domas residence. There are a few shots in particular that I really like. In this shot, we can see a piece of Grace's gown that has been torn off in her escape. This wisp of cloth, symbolic of her degrading marriage. What really sells this shot though, is the torchlight that creates a sort of halo around the frame, highlighting the diaphanous, delicate quality of the fabric which has been caught on the gate. In this scene, the headlights of the car are used quite cleverly to add suspense to the scene. I in particular love this shot, where the harsh light draws attention to Samara Weaving's piercing eyes. In the scene where Alex decides to betray Grace, the light is positioned so that half his face is enveloped in shadow to make this powerful moment even more ominous. And the last shot I want to talk about is this one. The frame is filled with a nauseating green initially, Alex's face is out of focus in the foreground. It set up as a moment of calmness. But slowly, in tandem with the music, a lurid red light penetrates the frame as the camera pulls in on Grace's face. It's a jump scare moment for sure, but at the same time subtly foreshadows Alex's betrayal with the harshness of this demonic red colour. These are only a few examples of the clever ways in which lighting is used. The movie is chock full of many more. The lighting is used to establish an unsettling atmosphere and also to reinforce the diabolism of the family and Grace's shattered innocence. Speaking of Grace, Samara Weaving does a fantastic job at portraying the evolution of her character. Grace starts out being quite nervous and reserved. She feels unsure as to whether the Le Domas family will accept her. A key example of this is when she says to Alex's mum that she doesn't smoke, when it has been established beforehand that she actually does. Weaving does a great justice to this aspect of the character, playing Grace with a great amount of delicacy to present her innocence and her desire for acceptance. By the end of the movie, however, Grace really comes into her own, choosing to openly reject the shackles of her marriage, and referring back to a quote from earlier, she reappropriates that symbol as a tool for her. Weaving captures this sense of refinement and confidence in Grace by the end of the movie. Actually, here's a pretty funny observation that I had, and I'm not entirely sure if this was intentional, but at the start of the movie, Weaving does what I can best describe as a snort when laughing. This isn't any random laugh, but it comes after a joke about Grace being a gold digger. And so whilst this is meant to be a funny moment, it also hints at Grace's insecurities about the marriage. And believe it or not, Weaving delivers an identical snort at the end of the movie, once everyone goes kaboom, once her marriage fully collapses. It's an interesting vocal choice. We get to hear the same laughter and snort, but at two very different points in Grace's development. I for one love it, even if it wasn't meant to be intentional. 
And so, we finally end with Grace, stepping out of the burning mansion. Her dress is a bloody red, her facial expression apathetic, unfazed, phlegmatic. She's tussled with the devil and his diabolical deeds. She's cast off the manacles of her marriage. Now, finally, she can have a smoke. God knows she needs one because, boy, she's had a long day. Thanks for watching.